Also in the news is Scaramucci. Now, last week I shared with you that Scaramucci had drunk, jumped off of the Trump train. And now it seems Scaramucci is putting together a group or team to go against Tribulation Trump. It seems as though Scaramucci has had enough. Now, I've seen the comments from many of you stating that why are you listening to Scaramucci and making all kinds of excuses, saying that the only reason why Scaramucci is upset is because he was fired very early. I find it very interesting how anyone who comes against Tribulation Trump, people will make all types of excuses. Now, could Scaramucci be upset at the fact that he was fired so early? Of course he could be. But to tell me that that is the reasons as to why he is going forth, making this effort to go against Tribulation Trump, when he has stated clearly the reasons as to why he has jumped off of the Trump train, I think is absolutely ridiculous to those of you who call yourself Trump supporters. But yet again, here we are. But I'll let you hear it from Scaramucci's mouth himself. Let's roll that clip and I'll be back with more comments. Who is that viable alternative? Who is the Republican that you think could step in and garner the support that well, President I mean, Trump the, has? The good, the, good news, the good news is you really haven't until November, but you could also skip over the states of Iowa, New Hampshire, and South Carolina, and you could work on the bigger states. And, and you, could, you could start winning delegates from some of the bigger states that are sour on the president. Yeah, but and like who? Just give me some names. you have standing inside the party. The, the, I'm just, I just. Well, I don't, I don't think it's fair. What, I don't, what about like Joe Walsh? I don't Joe think it's Walsh, fair to those former people. Former Congressman I don't think it's fair Joe Walsh, because he was on our air last week. And mm -hmm. he, like yeah. you, is quite vocal now speaking out against the president. So what about him? What about Mark Sanford speaking out? What about Bill Weld, who is running? Any so alternatives? I, I got to, I will. I'm in the process. I'm a, I'm a very organized guy, I'm in, and I know how to delegate. I'm in the process of putting together a team of people that feel the exact same way that I do. This is not a never Trump situation. This is not uh, uh, just uh, screeching rhetoric. This is OK. The guy's unstable. Everyone inside knows it. Everyone outside knows it. Let's see if we can find a viable alternative. Moreover, uh, I've got to get some of these former cabinet officials in unity to speak up about it. They they know it's a crisis. You know, it goes back to things like the Kane mutiny court martial. If you read that book, everyone was nervous on the boat, but it was a fitness to serve question. And it became your patriotic duty to speak out. So this is not and, a and never Trump sort of thing. Cabinet this members. is an organized process. OK, well, well, again, it would not be fair for me to bring up their names right now. But I will predict that in the middle to late fall, there will be a trove of people that will come together in unity and say, okay, look, this is what's going on. This is how the person's acting. This is why there's nobody inside the White House that he's taking any advice from. Uh, and so yeah. this is what you gotta do. And if you want five more years of somebody operating at the top of the government all alone, yeah. That's up to the United States and the voters to decide that. Now, Scaramucci has stated that he's putting together a team of people who feel the exact same way that he does. To be sure, there are many people that feel the way Scaramucci does. Last week, we also played a clip for you from Joe Walsh, former GOP Joe Walsh, who stated that there are many people that he knows who feels exactly the same way he does regarding Tribulation Trump. The problem, I think, is going to be whether or not you can get these people to actually come forth publicly. Now, so far, Scaramucci has made a public announcement that he no longer supports Tribulation Trump. Former GOP Joe Walsh has said the exact same thing, made a public announcement that he no longer supports Tribulation Trump. And when we talk about these two men, they're both saying that there are people who feel exactly the same way that they do, pertaining to knowing that Tribulation Trump is unfit, knowing that his rhetoric is full of hate. But the question I have is whether or not they will have the power or the strength to be able to pull these people together. Because though there may be people who feel exactly the way Scaramucci does, will they be willing to come forth publicly 
to make that announcement, to make it known before the world, and even more importantly, before tribulation Trump, that they disagree with his presidency, that they disagree with his rhetoric, that they uh, agree that he is unfit to be president. That is where the question comes. And so though, though Scaramucci has stated he's going to put together a team, um, we'll wait and see if he actually is successful in putting together this team. Um, because again, as I stated to you, there are many people who are against tribulation Trump, but they won't dare say it. They don't have enough spine um, to state that he is this unfit president and that they don't agree with his rhetoric and so forth. They just sit by silently when they are approached by reporters. They walk away. They quickly try to get out the door. Or when they do give a statement, it's not a clear statement. They run around the bush, but they never answer the question clearly. And so, again, this is where we are. So it'll be interesting to find out whether or not he actually can put together a team. And more importantly, a team of who? I am curious to see who would actually come out publicly besides Scaramucci and Joe Walsh to say that they are in disagreement with Tribulation Trump and they do not support him in any way, shape, or form. And as we're talking about Tribulation Trump and Scaramucci and uh, former GOP Joe Walsh jumping up the Trump train. The recent polls taken from um, many different organizations um, state that tribulation Trump is actually not doing as well as he would like to tell you that he is. Let's roll this clip and I'll be back. Registered voters now said they'd vote for whoever the Democrats nominate, anybody over Trump in 2020. According to that new NBC Wall Street Journal poll just out, 52 percent said they'd probably or definitely vote for the Democrat, whoever it is. Only 40 percent said they'd probably or definitely vote for Trump. Pretty 52. That's a big spread, 12 points. At the same time, during Trump's presidency, a generic Republican candidate polled ahead of him by only four points. So even back in the toughest age times of Obama, he was nowhere in this situation. An even more startling number for the poll right now involves white women with no college degree. A demographic that backed Trump in 2016, women that didn't go to college or finish college, 49 percent now say they support a Democrat, any Democrat. 43 said they'd vote for Trump again. In 2016, 61 percent that group voted for Trump. That was his, that was the mother load of votes, right? You know, a large reasons, well, the number one reason as to why tribulation Trump has been placed in the presidency, we know is because of Russia. There's no doubt about that, that this country um, illegally meddled into our democracy and therefore putting tribulation Trump in the seat of presidency. But what we're talking about, the supporters of tribulation Trump, as you saw in the polls, white women um, were the main, I, I guess, group of people as to why tribulation Trump won, as well as the Southern Baptist um, evangelicals. There's no doubt about that, that they are in high favor of tribulation Trump. But as you see here, as we have gone through almost four years of tribulation Trump, now there seems to be a turnaround. Um, going back to former GOP, uh, Joe Walsh, who stated that he regrets, he's remorseful for ever have voted for tribulation Trump. And to be sure, there are many people that fall in that category after dealing with what we've dealt with for almost four years now. But as you witness in those polls, as you observed in those polls, there are many people who are saying now at this point, I don't even care who the Democratic candidate is. I'm going to choose whoever because I cannot take another four years of tribulation Trump. And so there we have it. Now, I mentioned to you, mentioned to you earlier that tribulation Trump was having a lover's spat with the Fox News organization. And that is because Fox News also showed the poll where he had decreased in polls as far as his favor. There are many people if you say that the polls are accurate, who don't like what tribulation Trump has done, who don't like what he 
the things that he is saying. And so as a result of this, Fox News showing their polls, uh, Tribulation Trump got upset um, with his lover and stated he didn't understand why they were doing this. You know, they were always in favor for him. Uh, whenever it comes to the truth, it's fake news, even when Fox News does it. To Tribulation Trump, it's all fake news. But right now, again, they're having a lover spat. Trust me, they'll be back again with one another. But you cannot deny the truth. And when 2020 rolls around, again, our democracy will never, ever be the same again. But there's one thing to be sure. Tribulation Trump has turned it to that people are so eager to get to the polling booths this time around. Those people who did not vote in 2016 are now going to come out and vote in large numbers in 2020 because they don't want to see Tribulation Trump in office for another four years. Now, I'm about the business of believing the word of God, believing what God says, believing what God does. No matter what happens, I know that God is in control. And if Tribulation Trump is to become president again, it would only be because God allowed it to take place. And if not, the same thing applies. And so will there be a number of people rushing out on, to the 2020 polls? Without a doubt, more than we certainly saw in 2016. And even with those who did vote for Tribulation Trump in 2016, will actually vote Democratic this time. So it will be interesting once that time rolls around and we have, uh, what, about another 400 and something days before that should take place. Um, but this is certainly going to be a very, very interesting um, time in our country when the 2020 elections come up. And again, as stated, it doesn't matter who the Democratic candidate is. Right now, you know, many people are wishing for Biden and I don't think that Biden can actually handle tribulation Trump. I, I think that um, I think that when it comes to dealing with a mobster, a gangster like tribulation Trump, you're going to need someone who has one a lot more energy, um, one who can deal with the rhetoric that tribulation Trump spews, because, again, he does not play fairly. He doesn't. And we know how he speaks already. I don't think Joe Biden can handle tribulation Trump in a debate. I think that Trump would eat Joe Biden alive. And so certainly whoever the Democratic candidate is, and, and, and I might want to say this, um, I am not for the Democrats. I'm not for the Republicans. Um, but certainly as we have witnessed the Republican Party um, these last three and something years, it certainly has not been a turn for the better. Um, I don't expect anything better with the Democratic Party, um, which is why I'm not in favor of them as well. But I will agree, who wants to see Tribulation Trump in office for another four years? But again, I say before we take this um, break again, whatever is going to happen is going to be because God has allowed it to happen. And so I hear people saying, oh, he's going to win 2020 again and make America great. And there's no way tribulation Trump is going to lose. We don't know what's going to happen. If we follow what we are watching now with the polls, tribulation Trump will not be in office another four years. But as we have seen in politics so many time, so many times and times again, Anything can happen between now and November of next year. So we will see actually what does take place. I will say this again, and I can't say this enough. What you need is Jesus. You don't need a Republican Party. You don't need a Democratic Party. You need Jesus because only he will keep you during this time. The worst days are ahead of us. We have not seen anything yet. And I know that may be hard to believe. Sometimes it's hard for me to actually say that or to even think it. But the worst days are coming. And so again, you need Jesus. If you don't have him, you better get him as soon as you can. This is a bit of a news blog we do looking at spiritual wickedness in high places for the most part making uh, some observations about it and giving people a biblical foundation to the way of interpreting rather than have uh, uh, Sean Hannity or 
Laura Ingram or Janine Pirro or Anderson Cooper or Rachel Maydow or Don Lemon, uh, Rush Limbaugh interpret what's going on in the world. You come to me and I'll tell you based on what the word of God says. They'll just give you their worldly sinful view. But the man who will tell you what God has said, whether to say yea or nay, whether to go or to stay. You'll be led by the word of Almighty God. Come to the Manning Report on a daily basis to interpret the spiritual wickedness in high places because there's plenty of it that's going on. And so I am he. I'm the Lord, sir. James David Righteous Rebel Manning. And I'm here to serve you with news and information.